Hey, welcome back folks to McCord's Gardens here in the heart of the Rockies, Provo, Utah. Bright, sunny, desert wind day and we all know what that means here in Utah. It means things dry out like crazy. For example, look at these. This should not happen to you. You need to remember to water, water, water when we get hot desert winds like this. Things dry out so quick, especially your container planting. So keep that in mind, not only for annual plantings, but also for perennial plantings. And I am inviting you to do a walkabout with me right now on perennials. One of our great customers requested that we do this one, and I'm more than happy to oblige that because we've got some incredible perennials. And the great thing about perennials is that they come up again year after year and it reduces your maintenance. So just remember, I plant annuals annually. The other one, perennials, are gonna come up again and again for you, saving you a lot of time. Now, I have got you on the sun side here of McCord's Garden Center where we have our sun perennials. Just wanted to talk a little bit about two things before I show you a few of these beauties. The first one is we have to remember that we divide our perennials into sun perennials and shade perennials. The reason why we do that is sun perennials will take sun and they grow in it just great. Shade perennials burn baby burn in the sun. So we don't want those as to be planted as sun perennials. What that means is that if you've got a good shady spot, maybe on the north side of your house, in the shadow of the house itself, shade perennials are gonna go grow great there. But on the sun side, they will definitely burn. So we want to make sure we've got good sun perennials on the west and south side of the house. You can do a few kinds of shade perennials on the east side where we have the cool morning sun, but it's better to do it in full shade or dappled sun. So keep that in mind, sun or shade, that's your first question. The second thing you want to keep in mind is the blooming cycle of each perennial. Now for those of you folks who are familiar gardeners, you know that perennials have different blooming cycles. On average, the bloom cycle of a perennial will last four to six weeks. What that means is, is that throughout the growing season and into the fall, you need to make sure you select the right perennials so you always have something in bloom in your perennial bed. And then you can plant a few annuals here and there to provide some pops of color. Now remember, annuals we plant annually, perennials we plant only once and they come up again. So they reduce your maintenance and time investment in the garden. Now, with that in mind, let's have a look at some of these awesome perennials. Keep in mind on the blooming cycle one more point. In order to find out which perennials bloom when, it's best to either contact your local garden center or just make use of the internet and look up what perennials you're interested in in purchasing and planting and see what their bloom cycle is when they come into flower. Again, the rule of thumb is usually four to six weeks for each perennial. All right, so let's go walking here. Since we're having this high, hot desert wind today, I just want to point out the value of succulents and sedums and stone crops. These babies do not have to be watered and you can plant them in the hot, dry sections of your garden. They are amazing. They add color and interesting textures to your plantings. And guess what, folks? Even succulents have blossoms on them. Now, the blossoms aren't too distinguishable. They're usually in colors such as reds, yellows, and orange. But the foliage of these things is just amazing. They're really, really fun to plant. And we've got some really good examples here of the stone crop sedums and, and all of the kinds of uh, perennials that you can plant in a very dry environment. In addition, just on the end here, you'll notice Utah native cactus. We've got choyas and some prickly pears or snowman cactuses. These actually grow in Utah as natives and they will come up again and again as a, a perennial in your bed. They also have some beautiful flowers and are very interesting to look at, but just be careful. Keep the kids away from these. Keep following me. Now, also on this side, if you pan across here, you can see in our gallon containers that we have got some great irises and Asi Asiatic lilies. These will give some height and some different textures to the garden, as well as also providing great big flowers for blooms. Most of the time, these guys bloom towards the end of spring. So as we're coming to the end of spring and into summertime, 
you're going to see a lot of flowers. And actually, if you look closely on the irises, you can see they're already starting to bud out and get re getting ready to bloom, as well as the Asiatic lilies too. We've got some buds just appearing on these too. These add the really wow flowers to the background of your garden because the flowers are so large and just amazing. Also too, along with the irises, we have daylilies uh, that will bloom every year too for you. The thing that's great about the daylilies is they naturalize a garden environment. So it's a really nice flower to have to add some interesting textures with the blades of the daylilies as well as the blossoms. So they're amazing. In addition to that, we've got some kind of ground cover types of perennials too. The perennial verbena. Yes, that's right. There is a perennial verbena, not just an annual verbena. This one is has a nice deep violety purple flower, which you can see on this one here. And this will grow very, very quickly. It's an avid grower and it produces some nice flowers on it. The flowers on the verbena, again, you're going to usually see it in high summer and it blooms for a good long period of time, adding some nice color pop to the garden. In addition to that, right next to the verbena, we have the Utah Standard, Salvia. Salvia is an excellent uh, perennial to plant in the garden because it gives some nice flower spikes of a deep purpley blue. It also is very drought tolerant, and so you can forget to water it and it'll be very forgiving to you. But this is the one that a lot of gardeners have in their garden because it's so reliable and it does really, really well here in Utah with the drier climate. Now, if you'll follow me, I want to show you another flower that's called Coryopsis. Here on this table, we have several varieties of Coryopsis. The Coryopsis is more well known as the perennial marigold. The reason for that is the deep golden yellow color that it's got. And it blooms starting in late spring, right through to the end of summer. So this one has a very long bloom cycle on it. It's good to have in the garden because it carries its color for a very, very long time and continues to pop out flowers. But be careful which Coryopsis you pick because the gold yellow ones bloom much longer than, for example, the pink ones. The pink ones have a shorter bloom cycle. They usually last around four weeks in the garden but do add a nice pale color to your landscape. So it's a nice one to have for some contrast. In addition to that, let's talk a little bit about a very, very good flower that grows profusely here in Utah and can be used as an essential oil. This is, of course, lavender. Lavender is an amazing plant. It grows to about uh, three foot in a spherical growth pattern and so it takes up some good space. So throwing in a lavender plant in your perennial bed will not only take up space, but it will provide you with a lovely flower scent that you can have available to you for most of the season. Um, the flower scent not only comes from the bloom itself, but also the foliage smells amazing and has that nice lavendery scent. The bloom spike on the lavender again is a purpley blue and it's an amazing plant to add some size and again, a different texture to the landscape. Another one that we see in Utah a lot on the sun side is called guara. Now the guara we have here at McCord's comes in two colors. We have the pink guara, which has deep red foliage, as well as the white uh, guara, which has green foliage. This is commonly known as the butterfly plant because as you can see, the blooms very closely resemble a butterfly in the layout of the petals. This is an absolute wonderful must for your garden because not only is it drought tolerant, it also has a rather lengthy bloom cycle. At least the white does. The pink is a little less uh, lengthy in its bloom cycle. The white one though will put out flowers for about six, eight, six to eight weeks and usually you'll see this happening towards the end of springtime and it will give you a nice fleck of white right there where you need it. The interesting thing about the guara is that if you plant it in and amongst other plants, it will pop those spikes out throughout the other plants, giving some interest or added interest to the garden planting. Now, what I'd like to do is walk very quickly over to our shade side and just give you a couple of examples of shade plants for you to consider for your garden. So stick with me and follow me on our walkabout.
We're almost there, guys. This hot desert wind is causing me to sweat here, so stick with me in spite of it. Let's go this way. Okay, so here we are in the shade section of McCord's Gardens with our shade perennials. Just a couple of examples of what we've got here. One I'd like to show right off the bat is the columbine. The columbine is, amazing, is an amazing plant because it does very well in both sun and shade. If you plant it in sun, you'll see a few more blooms on it. But if you plant it in shade, the foliage tends to hold up a little bit better. But it's a wonderful multi-purpose plant. And guess what, folks? This is also Utah native. You can find columbine growing up in the high Uintas, no problem, as well as on the benches even here in Utah Valley. In addition to columbine, we have another awesome plant called astilbe. A stilby can get very, very tall, uh, 24 to 36 inches for some varieties. And this grows out with beautiful colored plumes. The plumes on the stilby are amazing and will add, again, a, lot, a different texture and a lot of interest to your garden. Also, too, to my left here, we've got ferns and hostas, which do great in Utah, but again, not in sun. These babies will burn really bad, so you want to make sure that you plant them pretty much in full shade. They will ha handle a little bit of dappled sunlight, but the preference would be shade, full shade if you can. In addition to these varieties, we also have lupins, which let's go over and take a look at them. Lupins are an amazing plant. Again, a native shade plant to Utah. They grow in the high Uintas in full sun, but down here in the valleys, because it's so hot in the summertime, they do a little bit better in the shade. These again give you beautiful multicolored spikes of flowers that are amazing. Just very, very thick bloom spikes and really enjoyable to look at in the garden. And do, they do great in a shade planting. In addition to these, we also have coral bells or hookera. Coral bells grow really, really well here in Utah. They enjoy our climate because of the reduction of fungus uh, in and about uh, plantings with the dryness of the air. But another great choice because you get these beautiful bells that are flecks of color as they blow in the wind. Another great way to contrast a plant in the garden and create interest in your garden setting. Well, folks, Right now, that's about all we have time for, but what I'd like to do is promise you that we will do a follow-up walkabout on perennials because there are so many varieties to choose from and you can do a lot of fun gardening with your perennial beds and reduce your maintenance time in the garden for more time to sit back and relax and look at what you did. So this is the Plant Boss coming to you live from Accords Gardens in Provo, Utah. We're glad you were able to visit with us today. Take care and keep on gardening.